this system of public lands includes parks, unique landscapes, forests, wildlife, refuges, historic trails, na natural streams and wetlands, nature centers, gardens, and other landmark areas throughout the nation that individually and collectively represent irreplaceable national resources, and whereas public lands provide locally accessible natural and cultural resources for environmental learning, wildlife appreciation, and recreation, and whereas public lands promote civic ideals that include shared stewardship and recognition of public ownership, and whereas shared stewardship requires the goodwill, cooperation, and active support of citizens, community, city and state officials, business leaders, children and adults, and whereas an alliance between private citizens and managers and community leaders improves the condition of publicly held lands for the greater enjoyment and enrichment of all Americans, and whereas National Public Lands Day, co-sponsored by the National Environmental Education Foundation, the Bureau of Land Management, the Bureau of Reclamation, the Department of Defense, the Environmental Protection Agency, the Natural, National Park Service, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the USDA Forest Service has become an annually anticipated event for local participation on publicly held lands in Florida and Lake County. Now, therefore, the City Council of the City of Tiberi proclaims September the 30th, 2017 as National Public Lands Day and call upon the people of the City of Tiberi and Lake County to recognize and participate in this special observance, passed and adopted this 20th day of September 2017. Okay, we're going to move on to agenda item. <laughs> We did that. Yeah, we did the approval of the agenda. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I thought we was going to add the uh, request. That's what I thought, but they said no changes. So I Which one? Well, the, the request for continuance that we got from the applicant for item uh, When I asked about approval of the agenda. No, I thought that was going to be taken up at the time. We can do it in the way it doesn't have to be. Yeah. It should be. should consider that request. I thought, I thought that was being handled as part of that. That's fine. All right, we're going to move on to agenda item five, which is the swearing in by city attorney and disclosure of ex parte contacts. Thanks, Peter. We have uh, two items on the agenda. Two items on the agenda tonight that are quasi judicial in nature. One is the uh, rezoning petition for, I guess, what we call the Shirley Shores or East Shirley Shores. Uh, um, annexation and rezoning, and we also have a land use um, a comp plan amendment for uh, an area. And uh, those are agenda items like 9 and 10, 9, 10, and 11, Mike, is that right? Uh, 7 and 8. 7 and 8. Yeah. Excuse me. 7 and 8. Yeah. Well, 6, 7, and 8. So if you're here tonight mm -hmm. to speak on item 6, which is ordinance 20. 2017-09, the large-scale future land use amendment uh, for city conservation land north of Lane Park Road, west of Camp Road, or if you're here tonight to speak and give testimony on tab 7, which is ordinance 2017-10, annexation and rezoning 222 acres, or tab 8, which is the uh, large-scale future land use map amendment for that rezoning ordinance, then our rules of quasi-judicial procedure require that we stand and be sworn in at this time. So if you're going to testify, or you think you're going to testify, uh, stand and we will swear you. Raise your right hands. Everybody's going to talk. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give in this cause be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. I do. Thank you very much. When we, um, when we come to the podium, uh, you'll, the clerk will have you put your name and address and contact information down when you speak. Uh, our rules also require that the council disclose any ex parte communications that you've had regarding either of these land use hearing matters. Um, ex parte communications would include communications written uh, or verbal telephone calls or emails. So if you've had any, we'll just go down the line because I know there are a lot of people here that are interested. So I've had phone calls and emails. Okay. Phone calls and emails. Phone calls and 
results of emails and face-to-face -face conversations. Saving your phone calls and emails. Um, and I've had phone calls, emails, and face-to-face. -face. <coughs> And would it be fair to say that those are from, I know it's probably difficult to uh, have everyone, but you had some that are in opposition and some in favor or vice versa, all in opposition? Mm -hmm. Could you characterize the nature to start with? Yeah, um, one of them was indecisive to me, just wanted me to keep an open mind, and a couple of them were against, and a couple of them were for, so. I'd say mostly communication was uh, mostly opposed. Probably have one that was, uh, you know, indifferent. Okay. I've had mixed. All right. Tyler? Yeah, I had mixed too. You know, annexation was one thing, and rezoning was another. And uh, so kind of that type of thing. All right. And, and I've specific had, I've had all, all were opposed except for <laughs> one. Okay. Good. And one was in, you know, keep it up in mind. All right. And if you've got any written communications, you should, of course, be finding those with the clerk. Thank you. Right, agenda item six, reading of all ordinances, resolutions, into the record, city clerk, Susie Novak. Thank you, Mayor. We have two resolutions at the second and final reading. Resolution 2017-09, a resolution adopting the final military at 7 points. 000 for the City of Tiberias, Florida for Apple and Texas for fiscal year 2017-2018, setting forth the percent by which the millage rate is greater than the rollback rate. Resolution 2017-10, a resolution adopting the final budget for the City of Tiberias, Florida for the fiscal year 2017-2018. We have two ordinances at second reading, Ordinance 2017-09 and Ordinance of the City of Tiberias. Florida amending the various components of future plan future land use map 2020, providing for a change of future land use designation on approximately 25.35 acres of land generally located north of Lane Park Road, west of Camp Road, from County Conservation to City Wetland and Conservation, CONS, providing for severability and conflicts, providing for transmittal and providing for an effective day. Ordinance 2017-10, an ordinance of the City of Tavares amending the boundaries of the city <coughs> annexing approximately 222 acres of land located west of Apopka, Buff Clare Canal, north of Lake Diane, south of East Shirley Shores Road and east of Shirley Shores Road, presenting said property from Lake County Agricultural A and Community Facility District CFD to City of Tavares Plan Development PD subject to the rules, regulations, and obligations ordained by the City of Tiberias Council, providing for an effective day. And we have one ordinance at first reading and transmittal hearing, and ordinance 2017-11, an ordinance of the City of Tiberias, Florida, amending the Tiberias Comprehensive Plan and Future Land Use Map 2020, providing for a change of future land use designation on approximately 222 acres of land generally located west of Apopka Boat Park Canal, north of Lake Diane, south of East Shirley Shores Road, and east of Shirley Shores Road, from county rural transition to city suburban, providing for severability and conflicts, providing for transmittal, and providing for an effective date. Right, thank you, Susie. Okay, we're going to move on to agenda item seven, the consent agenda. Does anyone in the audience have any questions or any disagreement with anything on the consent agenda? Council? I'll move to approve the consent agenda. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 5 to 0. Okay, we're going to move on to number 9, public hearing. Oh, no, we can't do that. That's that. after 5. After 5. So we're going to skip number 9 and come back to that. All right, uh, we're going to move on now to tab six. Mike Fitzgerald. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Ordinance 17-09 proposes a large-scale amendment to the future land use map 2020 of the comprehensive plan. The subject property is owned by the city of Tiberias. It's 25 acres in size, consists of two parcels of property located on the north side of Lane Park Road, west of Camp Road. The property was donated to the city in 1987 and is considered a wetland. Uh, 
uh, Ordinance 1709 would amend the future land use designation from County Conservation to City Wetland and Conservation. Uh, on July 19th, 2017, the City approved the annexation and rezoning of the property from Lake County Agricultural to City of Tiberias Wetlands Preservation Area. Uh, site conditions. The property is uh, currently a conservation area. No development will be permitted except nature trails, which may include the permitted construction of boardwalks. Uh, there is no water and sewer in the area, and it is not expected that this property will have uh, any impact on city services for, for water and sewer. Uh, the Department of Economic uh, Opportunity has reviewed the proposed amendment and identified no comments related to the important state resources and facilities. Um, the Planning and Zoning Board on June 15th voted unanimously 5-0 to zero to recommend approval of Ordinance 17-09 and staff recommends that City Council moves to adopt Ordinance 17-09. Thank you, Mike. Okay, Council, do you have any comments? Yes, I have a couple of comments. Um, first of all, I agree with Old sort of major property there, so I move to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes five to zero. All right, we're going to move on to tab seven, ordinance 2017 10. Mike Fitzgerald. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, at this time, I think I would like to call, before I give a presentation on this, I would like to call the applicant to the podium to address City Council. Yes, sir, state your name and your address for the record. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Mayor. My name is Jimmy Crawford. I'm attorney 1201 West Highway 15. Thank you. Thank you. 1201 West Highway 15 in Claremont. And I represent the applicant of the annexation of the land use plan, plan amendment and the PUD that is proposed for what they call the Shirley Shores property. Um, late last week, we wrote a letter requesting a postponement uh, of this for 30 days, and it's really for several different reasons. My office was down for a week. We were five days without electricity and a day getting the computer, my, actually two days for my computer, getting them all back in order. And uh, we fell significantly behind on, on preparations for getting this ready for what we know is a significant hearing for the city and for the neighborhood. Uh, I also have been in contact with some of the neighbors and wish to have better conversations with them as to exactly what we're asking for, what they need, what we can do together to eliminate some of the conflict. Um, therefore, we are requesting a postponement of, well, I call it 30 days, but it's to the October 18th meeting. Uh, we do understand there's re-advertising and re-notification costs that the applicant has to supply for, for that to happen. Okay, well, that's uh, good enough for now. I've got quite a few people who would like to speak. Uh, so... Yes, ma'am. If you have any questions for yes. us, let us know. All right. Thank you. Uh, I think the procedural is that we have a request to postpone or to continue. Can I hear you? I have a request to continue from the applicant. Um, Unless there's a motion to continue, it won't continue. If you want to discuss a continuance, there should be a motion in a second to continue this to the time certain as requested. Um, and then you can have uh, entertained discussion among yourselves or you can entertain public debate on the continuance only. Continue. I think the motion 
probably under Roberts's continuance, but it right, I just want to make sure I understood. Time to a time certain, and then your LDRs are, are uh, uh, require. Uh, it's not really required by state law, but our specific city LDRs also require that if the postponement is at the request of the applicant, that the applicant has to pay the costs of re-notifying and re-advertising the hearing, uh, just to make sure that everybody gets due notice of the new hearing topic. But if we're voting, so we're just making a motion, we're not voting whether or not we're going to do it because that's right, you're making a motion first. If, unless there's a motion to consider the continuous, no action takes place and the and the zoning hearing goes on. You have a request to continue. If you want to consider the continuous, you have to make a motion to lay it on the table to discuss it. So yes, the motion would be to support the continuance of the council. Uh, how would you like council, how would you like to live? I mean, this, that's a tough one because it actually depends on that's out there, but it's also, we did have a hurricane come through. So that's what's kind of going through my thing, too, because it is still a fair request, and yet I know it's been on everybody's mind for a while as well. So, um, gee, kind of and again, and again. I'll, uh, I'll make a motion so we can discuss it. So I'll make a motion that we grant the continuance. And I'll second that motion so we can have and I think it's a fair thing to do with, uh, with the circumstances that have happened okay, over so the last week. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Now you can have discussion. So I don't have to make this a motion. We can go right into discussion and let the people talk about before we vote. Sure, you can that's do whatever. What that's what I was asking. You, you can discuss it among yourselves as a council, or you can entertain audience input only okay. on the motion to continue, not on the merits of the of the zoning hearing until we get to the zoning hearing itself. If you grant the motion to continue, it will be continued until October 18th. If you deny the motion to continue, then we'll have the zoning hearing on the zoning matter at second reading. Okay, council. So I think what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and hear the audience, and we'll have our discussion. I also want to remind the audience, this: if you're coming up to speak, Please don't be repetitive from the person before you. If you agree with the person, if that's exactly what you were going to say, then just say, I agree with the person before me. And also, do not discuss, we're not discussing the case itself. We're just, the merits of the case, we're just discussing whether or not we should allow him to postpone it. Or, you know, allow him or not allow him. And I'm going to give each of you about two minutes. And I do time, and I will call the next person. So, um... First, I'm going to call Randy Strode. No comment at this time. Okay. Bill McEachty. Thank you, Mayor. You were really close with McKechnie, but everybody gets it wrong, so thank you. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, can I ask a question? Are we just discussing the delay of the meeting, or can I talk about what I feel are the merits of the project? No, that is not in discussion. Just a delay. It's just a delay. Yes, sir. That's all we're discussing is whether or not we should allow them to delay the meeting. We're not discussing no. the merits of the meeting. It's okay. We're not on my sales. Um, that's a decision for the council, and I don't expect that decision you make, so thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Lou Ronka. I'd like to divert to Don Kerr, who would speak for me. All right, Don Kerr. Thank you, Mayor and uh, Town Council. I really appreciate the opportunity to, to read a statement to you. Number one, the lawyer for the developer on this project requested to postpone the hearing for another month because, according to the letter, it's Hurricane Irma <coughs> delayed his team. I received an email from Mr. Crawford uh, shortly after a meeting I had last week that said uh, he would like to uh, defer it, but he didn't mention anything about Hurricane Irma. What he mentioned was two other items. Um, I'm going to skip ahead to not use my two minutes. Basically what has happened here is there are two items that are critical. He says he wants to get together with the neighborhood, which we are all in favor of. The second thing, and you have copies of this, or uh, Mr. Gurry should have distributed them, um, is that He's claiming that the owner of the property did not actually correctly uh, sign the application, and that is true. The, the application was signed 
as owner by this developer who doesn't own any of this property. Uh, he's had multiple weeks in order to correct that situation and I don't know if he's been able to. Uh, I have found out that out of the eight parcels in, in contention, uh, there's four owners and all four of them have the exact same address and the exact same contact person who lives in two areas. So it's fairly obvious I'm being out lawyered here. I'm not an attorney. This is the third time neighborhoods come before the city to inform you of the details of the development and have our voices heard. We came to your last city council hearing on September 6th. We're told by Scott Gherkin he appreciated our turning out, but please come to the hearing on the 20th and be heard. Now we need a delay because the developer claims they're not ready. I'm pretty sure that the people who were really busy during this hurricane are the people in this room who took care of us. You're here and you're ready to hear it. I've had four weeks to get ready for this. I'm here and I'm ready to hear it. And I would respectfully request that we actually hear it today. And I'd like to take any questions that you have, but I'd like to reserve the right to read one more short paragraph after your question. Well, I'll we, second that. We are, your time is up, sir, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Maloof. I defer to Don, sir. All right. <laughs> I have two minutes. <laughs> I referred to him so he could get an additional two minutes. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> if, you'd like, if you'd like to come up and use your two minutes, feel free to, sir. Pardon me? I'm, I'm talking to Mr. Sorry, I swear. Okay, next what is more you guys play by. If there's something. What rule book are you playing by? Um, yes, ma'am. Ms. Pittner. Yes. Hello. Um, I reside at 15825 Acorn Circle, Tamaris, Florida, and that is in Squirrel Point subdivision. She doesn't get it to start at 7. And I am the Homeowners Association president currently. It is fairly obvious that I am being outlawed here. I am not an attorney. This is the third time that our neighborhood has come before the city to be informed of the details of the development and to have our voices heard. We came to your last city council hearing on September 6th and we're told that by Scott Berger, oh wait, this is where I'm going. My request is simple. If the city council has already decided in their minds that you're going to approve this annexation and perhaps with conditions, please grant the postponement to give us time to lawyer up as well so that our voices can be heard. However, if you believe that enough of you are still questioning if it is a good idea to annex this property at this time, please deny the request to delay. I am ready to present the case and so is our neighborhood. The one condition I have for presenting my case today is that Mr. Crawford and the developer agree on the record to be bound to the decisions made by the City Council today and not pull another legal loophole like objecting on the record objecting on the record, and then appeal to the procedural basis of the vote against him. And I have researched some of this. Again, I am not a ter an attorney, but I know these players have been involved in this property development for over nine years. They had way more time than any of us have had to prepare. And um, so I would like to see you make the decision to move ahead. I'm sure there's probably another project that would like the time on the October schedule. And we're all here once again. Um, I'm sure that they're hoping that we will become busy with our lives again and not show up for the next hearing. But as you can see, all of us are here and we are all ready. Um, we all stand in opposition of the project. Vance Yoakum, I write the blog FiscalRangers.com, uh, 12619 Milwaukee Avenue, Ferris. Um, I've been attending the meetings. I'd first like to commend uh, uh, John Drury and Mr. Fitzgerald and uh, Mr. Williams. Uh, they met with us. They explained some of the facts about how this whole process works, and I appreciate that. Uh, I think that uh, I have been observing how these residents have been working. 
uh, and uh, about the only issue, if you decide to extend this, is I have time to make more videos on this. <laughs> and I just uploaded another one today. So uh, I would like to recommend that you do hear this today because attorneys, uh, as have been said, have had many months to prepare for this. Uh, and uh, they should go ahead and make their case. While the residents are here, they have prepared, they've showed up. This is the third meeting now, and they need to get their say in. Thank you. All right, thank you, Vance. Brian Cybernagel. Nothing to add. All right, thank you. All right, Council. Y'all have any questions for? Uh, yeah, go ahead. You have two minutes. State your name and your address for the clerk. Okay, my name is Deborah Mauer, two nine two four six Belfast Drive, Sperry's, Florida. Uh, this is imperative to the the safety of our county and our state and this land you guys are talking about time time okay how much time do you think it took for those cypress to grow do you not think that god's creation takes time and now you're putting this through and giving this developer more time to prove the reasons why it's okay to destroy cypress that save us from floods, us current residents that are sitting on sinking sand. And you are responsible for my safety and the safety of us that are around the perimeter of the land. And who on God's green earth is giving these people precedence over us that live here? You don't need the taxpayer's money. We need God's creation to save us from hurricanes and floodwaters and these things. And you guys just are, like, I can't even believe this is even up for discussion. I get the fact that everybody has a right to sell their land, but not at the expense of the current citizens, okay? And we pay tax dollar money. We pay a lot of money to live there. And it needs to stay, I declare it needs to stay agriculture, one per five, the way the rest of the center land is between Lake Apopka and Lake Beauclair, which they spend millions of dollars renovating, which you guys will all throw away, all goodwill. So my plea, and I declare that you do not allow any more time for this developer to destroy God's creation when it took millions of years to make it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, Council, do you have any questions for Mr. Fitzgerald? Or Mr. Crawford, I'll, I'll go first because I'm, I'm a little confused. I, I, I know or I think um, I, the developer has reached out and has requested that he gets a continuance so he can reduce the amount of home in the, in the parcel and that he can talk to the neighbors to make sure that their requests are at least listen to and incorporate it? Yes, sir. I believe that the applicant has been uh, sensitive to a lot of the input from the residents uh, at the PNZ meeting, planning and zoning board meeting, and wants to take some time to address some of those concerns properly and is, that, and is therefore asking for the continuance. So let me see if I understand that. Start over. The request is so that he can then go back to the residents because he understands now what their situation is and want to reduce the amount of dwellings within a certain amount of property. Is that what I'm getting? I think you should ask the applicant yeah. the question, Mike. Did you get that yeah, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to speak on behalf of the applicant as far as what changes they want to make. You heard the question? Uh, yes, Councilman. Yes, we we had originally submitted a plan that showed a hundred lots. We don't want to build a hundred lot plan. We want to build the sixty-four lot plan that is out there. 
So we were in the process of revising that and resubmitting it when the hurricane did. It caused us a delay for getting it going. So we don't want to reduce it beyond the 64, but we want to cement that and make sure that we're legally bound to not go beyond the 64. And I don't think that's the only concern. They also have traffic concerns and driveway concerns, and we'd like time to meet with them on those as well. I lost my two minutes. <laughs> now that I've heard what he has to say, I'd like to speak. <laughs> Come on up, sir. Thank you. <laughs> this only has to do with the continuance. It has nothing to do, to do with, with the lots or the lot sizes. That's all it's going to have to do with. Okay, go ahead, sir. If he wants to meet with the homeowners and the residents, they're all here right now. <laughs> We're going to talk to this whole thing. There's no reason to continue this thing any further. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, let's talk. I think let's go ahead and talk. We've got a motion in this second. All right, now we have a motion in a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Opposed? Motion passes 5 to 0. So, just for the audience perspective, the uh, next two items have been postponed until October. Until what's the date? 17th. Is it the 17th? 18th. October 18th. So the council will rehear this case on October the 18th. Time the lawyer up. Mr. Troy, I apologize. Is there a yes, room the anywhere where we can go with one of your great people together and we need to go outside? Yeah.
Your American flag can be properly retired with a reverence that is, that is entitled. Out of respect for our nation's flag and for the convenience of our residents, Freddie Melton, a lifelong Tavares resident, purchased a custom wrapped flag depository box and wishes to donate it to the city of Tavares. So, there. If accepted, this flag depository box will be located in the Freedom Flag Monument area. City staff will install and maintain the box, and an appropriate organization such as the Scouts will be given the opportunity to collect the flags from the box on a regular basis and dispose of them as outlined in the flag code. Um, there's two options. One is to accept the donated flag depository box, generously donated by Freddie Bell, and the other is to not accept it. Uh, if it's accepted, the, the, the cost is very, very minimal. We'll just pour a little foundation slab to uh, secure the box on. It's found to be legally sufficient, and uh, Freddie's in the audience. I don't, I don't know if you have any questions, but uh, Freddie there. All right, thank you, Chris. Council? Okay. 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 It's an idea that my uh, uncle gave me, he's a uh, former Marine, and he was up in, lived up in Bethesda, Georgia. And he, I saw it up there, and it took a while to find, get everything together and find one, because uh, you can't get it from the post office apparently, so we ordered one, my wife found it, and my wife Tracy. And uh, then we went to a gentleman over in Mount Dora, and he, we decided what the wrap was going to be, and we had it wrapped. And, uh, I think they got a good location for it. So I think all the branches of the military are all identifying on the bottom. The bottom of he incorporated America's seaplane city by putting right. a seaplane in it. That's right. very, very patriotic. Uh, I will add that I met with you out there uh, and with Chris to identify a location yes, sir. Uh, next to the um, where all the military are honored. Uh, and I think we've got a great location if this council approves it. And uh, as Chris said, we'll be working with uh, uh, the Boy Scouts to appropriately um, check on, on, on the flags and do what needs to be done with the flags if it's approved. Thank you. Fantastic. It's wonderful, Fred. Get that thing bolted down and in place. It's terrific. I'd like to make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 5-0. You're famous. <laughs> Mayor, would you like to have a picture yeah. later? Why don't we, uh, hey, uh, John, yeah. can you hold one sec? Let's have the mayor on the other side of that. Okay, let's get that formal. Let's make it formal. Helps us a little bit. Push it around a little bit. <laughs> you want to get in? I didn't know. Oh, I love it. It's a good idea. All right, perfect. Beautiful smile. Beautiful smile. One more for good measure. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. That's just so fun. A little bit easier than the last thing. Yeah. Go <laughs> UCF. Yes. Or tomorrow. Okay, Jack Jen. Approval of IAFF contract. Chief Keith. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Uh, for the record, Richard Keith, the Fire Chief. And this is probably the least exciting item on your agenda tonight. So uh, this is the renewal of the contract, collective bargaining agreement with your firefighters, the Firefighter Union, Local 3245. So over the last few months, uh, the management uh, negotiation team has met with the union negotiation team, and I would like to thank our, our management negotiation team, especially uh, Mr. Grenier, who uh, represented your council on there, and Mr. Drury, who was the chief negotiator. And we met uh, on several occasions with the uh, executive board representatives from the, the union local, Mike Kelly, who's the president, and Madison Leary, who's the vice president. And so we are presenting to you tonight the, uh, the results of that negotiation. So you have an agenda packet there that, that, that could, um, could
contains part of the agreement, just the parts that change. So we didn't give you the whole, the whole agreement. Um, so you'll see uh, in your agenda packet there the articles that and the places where um, additions or, or deletions were made. Additions are, of course, uh, underlined and deletions are struck through to give you that. Those strike throughs and underlines don't show up in the, in the final product. So the salient points um, among these uh, the, uh, suggested changes are the union acceptance of cost of living adjustment increase of 4% consistent with other city employees, the union acceptance of health insurance adjustments consistent with other city employees, the mutual agreement to make no changes to the firefighter pension plan during this contract period and this collective bargaining agreement will become effective on October 1, uh, if you approve tonight, and will remain in effect for one year. So the options are city council could accept the proposed collective bargaining agreement between the city of Tavares and the Tavares Professional Firefighters Local 3245 as amended and authorize the city administrator to sign the agreement on behalf of the city of Tavares. Option two, the city council could reject the proposed collective bargaining agreement and direct staff with alternative direction. So the staff recommendation is to move to accept the proposed collective bargaining agreement between the city of Tavares and the Tavares Professional Firefighters as amended and authorized city administrator to sign the agreement on behalf of the city of Tavares. So, a mayor, council, I'm here for any questions. And Mr. Pernier, again, thank you, Mr. Drury. Thank you for being a part of that negotiation. Any questions for the chief? Uh, I don't have a question for the chief, but uh, maybe for Lori. This will affect our budget if we were to approve it, correct? We put uh, all the final things discussed in the Okay. It would only health insurance and pension. It would only affect the budget if we were to vote it down. So, chief, it sounds like our hardworking firefighters that we appreciate so much are being treated just as well as our hardworking staff that we have here in the city of Tavares, is that correct? Yes, sir, Vice Mayor. All right, sounds wonderful. So with that, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the collective bargaining agreement as it is. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right. Motion passes five to zero. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. All right, tab 11, Irma post-storm update, John Jury. I had uh, hoped to put together an update that was more robust, but quite frankly, to myself, every time I try to document what's happened over the last eight days, you get pulled and you're actually still working the storm. Uh, so this is a very brief update on where things uh, have been and where things are, and I'll be happy to answer you other uh, any questions that you have uh, before I. Um, show some photographs of uh, some of the areas that I saw uh, going through the storm. And I'd like to point out a few things about the storm and in preparation of it. Uh, it begins with the Red Book that every department has that Richard puts together for us. Uh, Richard Keith is our emergency management director for the city of Tavares. He puts together an emergency response plan, formidable Red Book, and each one is tailored uh, for each department. Uh, and that is the beginning of preparing for a plan. And that book was done two, three years ago, and it's updated annually. Uh, so every department uh, has the book, goes through it, updates it, and gets ready for the plan. Uh, it then goes into weather reports. Richard Keith was uh, very diligent on giving us all the weather reports, both to the council, department heads, uh, helping us keep an eye on where this storm was and where it was going uh, and kept us uh, 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 up, up to speed so that we could begin preparing as we needed to. And then activating the emergency operations center that the county runs and designating three people to be our liaisons there. And those three were Bob Tweedy, our economic development director, uh, Buddy uh, Lutcock, uh, who is uh, with the fire department, and Chris McCormick, our code enforcement officer. These three volunteered to do 12-hour shifts at the EOC for multiple days that then turns into 24-hour shifts as you ride out the storm there as well. They are the liaison that we call out in the field uh, uh, to get updates and to get assistance from the Red Cross, the Sheriff's Department, and everything else that's uh, 
uh, that's there. We then put our uh, pre-storm activity program into place. And that's locking down everything, identifying uh, which employees are going to ride out the storm, and, and establishing a shelter, uh, which uh, this year was at the Tavares High School. Placement of employees in, uh, that are going to ride out the storm. We identify all the employees in the different departments that are going to ride out the storm, notify their families uh, that they are going to be here. We had uh, storm riders in the fire station, obviously, storm riders in the police department, storm riders at City Hall, storm riders out at the utility department, and storm riders at the public works department. These folks spend the night in those locations so that when the storm passes, they can uh, immediately get out without worrying about getting to the city. Uh, get the equipment, open up the roads to get emergency vehicles to the various houses uh, and various businesses that need them. The mayor's reverse 911 call out all the citizens working with us to notify all the citizens what they need to do to prepare. Sometimes uh, citizens are in a, a rush and they, and they think about water and things like that. They forget about fuel, they forget about um, cash uh, and uh, what numbers to call if they have problems. Uh, and so uh, the mayor does a reverse 911 call. Then there's the storm event which occurred. Uh, and then obviously we responded to all the, um, uh, to the storm immediately after by opening up all the roads. Uh, uh, traffic lights were out. Uh, Lake County manages those. They did not have enough generators to keep them going. So we began lending our generators. Then we began calling Mount Dora that had extra and they lent it to us and we lent it to Lake County. And our goal was to get all these traffic lights uh, working so that we wouldn't have any accidents. Um, securing the seaplane base marina, which was hit hard, um, that was done with the police, our uh, folks down there at uh, the seaplane marina, and then obviously getting um, a salvage company, an environmental firm, to work together uh, to uh, begin mobilizing to deal with uh, what happened down there. Well checks to our senior centers. Uh, Tiki Village, the Caroline Retirement Community, THI, those well checks by our police officers resulted in uh, the finding that some of these um, places did not have adequate uh, uh, water, sewer, electrical, or, or other facilities. And it was all hands on deck. We lent generators, we brought food, we brought water, and we helped these folks out. And I think a lot of you know what went on there. <coughs> Responding to 7 uh, Eleven fuel fights at the pumps, there were uh, quite a few uh, altercations in different locations around the city. The police department was great on uh, sending our officers to all the fueling facilities and tempering down the hot heads uh, uh, that were there uh, while people were running lines in front of each other. Uh, so that was handled very well. Responding to traffic accidents at intersections. Uh, quite a few traffic accidents, motorcycles and things like that, particularly where the traffic lights weren't working. Uh, so we're running uh, normal uh, traffic um, accidents as well. Updating citizens on Facebook, the website, and the dedicated city lines. No, we have a police Facebook page, we have a city Facebook page, we have a fire department Facebook page, we have a city website. Keeping our website Facebook coordinators updated with various things that are going around the city. People get their news that way now. Uh, and I think they did a very good job on the four-way test before posting things on those things to keep our citizens updated. updated. Uh, as I said, uh, negotiating um, agreements with uh, our mitigation efforts, activating the storm cleanup plan, designating the Caroline Field as a staging, staging area for all storm debris as we work through FEMA's rules. FEMA's got some tough rules where they got to come in, bring their people in, audit what's commercial, audit what's residential, audit how many... Uh, uh, what you're bringing before you're allowed to bring it. A lot of cities decided to hold and wait until FEMA contractors came in. Most of them were tied up in Texas and weren't coming. So we activated our own plan, which was to go ahead and start moving everything immediately, not wait for the auditors and do our own audit. Working with our finance director and our FEMA rules and regulations and our attorney, I think we got a good audit plan in, in, uh, in, in, in place and we were able to uh, remove storm damage immediately instead of waiting a month or two until the uh, FEMA auditors were in before you can move things. Working daily with Duke and Seco, um, Bob really gained a great relationship with um, the uh, uh, electrical companies that were in the EOC and that gave us great access to getting things taken care of. You'll see down lines, no power, here, there, everywhere. 
uh, and that relationship helped us mobilize people, mobilize Duke and SECO to areas in which um, we had medical issues, senior issues, and things like that. Uh, moving generators from lift station to lift station to keep the flow going. As you know, 50% of our lift stations have generators that are fixed there, 50% do not. 50% that do not require that we move uh, generators, empty the lift station, move to the next one, empty it, and then as it starts to get filled, hopefully we can get to 15 of them and get back to that one before it gets filled. I think we only had about two, two claims, two issues, where we just missed it by a minute or two. Uh, to get back um, to that one left station that needed to be empty. I think we did a great job there too. Shutting down City Hall uh, and really just keeping those that were in immediate need to take care of business that needed to keep things uh, uh, going. Um, cutting trees off lines, um, you'll see some photographs of that. Uh, activating the whole FEMA uh, protocol. As you know there are private parks, Holiday Park, El Red Park, they don't subscribe to our uh, garbage and do their own, but they were in need of garbage removal. Uh, and you know the way we roll into berries uh, is we just go ahead and take care of it. Um, people needed things taken care of, and so we took care of some of those uh, some of those issues. Uh, and then finally, during all this, I think we all realized that we're going to be going eight days straight. Uh, people are going to get tired. The citizens are going to want to come out and we should move forward with our arts in the park program. Uh, and Tamara was working behind the scenes, working with all the people that uh, are needed to put the arts program back together, uh, and we were able to pull that off as well. I'd like to go ahead and click very quickly through here. Mike, I'm just going to kind of talk uh, about each photograph. These are ones that are no, they're kind of a random-ish order uh, that I just pulled out together this afternoon. Uh, hold on a second, and I'll, I just want to speak on each one back up. So it begins with our city council and the leadership. Uh, you all have given us the tools, the resources, and the funds to go ahead and take care of 15,000 residents. Uh, uh, and without that, it never would have happened. Uh, go ahead. Uh, this is one of our uh, post pre-storm meetings. Uh, we bring everybody here in this room. Uh, you can see the fire department, the uh, police department, our mayor was there. Uh, and uh, Richard is leading uh, the charge on what we're going to be doing. Go ahead. Uh, this is the mayor doing a call out with the IT. The reverse 911 is a little bit complicated. We are sending out calls to every citizen of the various who has signed up uh, for our program. It means you're getting texts, uh, emails, uh, cell phone calls, and regular calls if you have registered uh, with the city of the and you're getting that all out as well. Go ahead. <coughs> this is our police station. Uh, this is getting an update from EOC, uh, working with um, the, the, the poor team that needs these, these kinds of updates. Go ahead. Uh, that's the EOC. I, if you look real closely, um, uh, that's Buddy in the middle, on the right hand, in the, kind of in the middle. Uh, but that's what the EOC looks like. Yeah, very good. Thank you. <laughs> so he's representing us in that particular uh, moment. And as I said, we had three others, and he did 12 hour shifts throughout the whole storm. Go ahead. Uh, that's Richard and I getting an update on the storm uh, in his office. So we have people out in the field like Richard who are getting uh, updates from uh, EOC with our representative in EOC. Go ahead. Uh, this is uh, people uh, laying out their mattresses in City Hall. This is conference room two. There were mattresses here. There were mattresses in my office. So we got a lot of people sleeping in City Hall, uh, riding out the storm. We are all very looking forward to our new public safety complex. This is not a hardened building. This is not prepared for those kinds of storms. Uh, but it's all we had at the time, and so that's what we needed to do. Go ahead. Uh, that's the path it took. We all know it went right up to center of Florida. Go ahead. Uh, the eye went right over to Barry's, uh, right, right down the center, so we got hit pretty hard. Go ahead. Uh, and then the storm uh, did quite a lot of damage. Uh, this is a tree that was split in half in someone's neighbor, uh, neighborhood. I think Mr. Grenier's neighborhood, actually. Go ahead. Uh, these are trees that are across uh, uh, power lines, across roads, into berries. Go ahead. Uh, this is uh, my neighborhood. This is a neighbor's uh, whole full screen. Ended up going through another neighbor's um, house, basically. Go ahead. Uh, more trees down. Go ahead. More trees just taking over. Uh, this is uh, oh, this is uh, Mr. Grenier going uh, taking photographs right after the storm. 
uh, with me as we did a, a, a ride around. Go ahead. Uh, flooding at Caskies and flooding in other locations. Go ahead. Uh, debris and uh, think the fences damage. Go ahead. Uh, waves two, three feet still going. That windsock is straight out. Uh, more flooding over by the um, seaplane banks. Go ahead. Traffic lights out. This was our biggest problem. Traffic lights out at night. When a traffic light is out at night, people can't see it, and that's where we had our biggest problems. It was imperative that we uh, get all these lights uh, operating. It took us a while to help Lake County. Uh, it's one of the things we're going to talk about under uh, a post storm in a week when we all get together and look at uh, things we need to do to uh, help other agencies who don't have the resources to that we depend on, like uh, traffic lights. Go ahead. Uh, City Hall, right back there, uh, right where Diane is sitting, right above her head. Um, is there? Did they put it back up there? Or is it still nasty? Uh, yeah. Well, we had water damage uh, throughout this whole city hall, everywhere. We've got a re remediator here. We've emptied a few offices. Um, is, you know, this building is just not set up for that kind of stuff. Go ahead. Uh, damage. Uh, that was a. That's the Freedom Boat um, Club uh, headquarters. That was a very large houseboat, as you all know, and it has sunk. There's another boat on top of piling, and all of our docks are gone. Go ahead. Uh, we basically have a ball of boats down there. Some of them are on top of each other, and we are picking through each one with an environmental firm uh, that is working with our uh, salvage company, uh, and we are doing this uh, boat by boat. Um, Dock by dock, we'll be doing it over the next couple of uh, weeks. Go ahead. Uh, this kind of just gives you an idea of the docks, the boats, all piled up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, this is a private, uh, there were a lot of private docks and boats uh, that also damaged. Go ahead. Uh, this is one of our generators uh, right after the storm being deployed to a lift station. Uh, they're there for 10 minutes, they pump everything out, and that truck and that generator will be deployed to the next lift station, and the next lift station, and the next lift station. Hopefully someday we'll have, all our lift stations will have uh, generators, but they're not there yet. Go ahead. Uh, this is our uh, our shelter at the various high school. Uh, this, this, when I first got here, it was early. Um, there weren't that many people there, but over time, it grew to close uh, to 100, and uh, uh, council member, uh, Amanda Vargas uh, was there volunteering. Go ahead. Uh, there's a picture of her. And then there's uh, Sandy Gamble, who used to sit on this board, is now a, a school board member, uh, and one of our police officers, and then the National Guard. And they ran that shelter for us uh, very, very well. Uh, I will say that for a shelter that uh, didn't have generators. Go ahead. Oh, that's my lost dog, Heidi. Founder, go ahead. Uh, more uh, meetings uh, after the storm, go ahead. Uh, this is up by Wind Dixie, so the tree took out a major line. Uh, that was pretty bad. You can see the pole in the back just snapped right in half, go ahead. Uh, that's just showing you the line down, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Wendell, we all know Wendell. Here's a, here's a line down. He's taking a photograph of the identification for that poll. So there's five numbers, six numbers on that poll. He will get that to EOC. Uh, our people, EOC, will get it to Duke, who's sitting right next to him. Duke will get it to their people, and then Duke will respond to that poll uh, and, and take care of that mess there. Go ahead. Well, that's where I slept, outside. Uh, at home because we have no air conditioning. Go ahead. Uh, this is all of the Duke contracted uh, people coming to the berries. It's kind of a neat sight. As far as the eye can see, they were coming to the berries. Uh, this is the intersection uh, uh, of 441 and David Walker of uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trucks in a line coming to the berries to store power to this area. Go ahead. And then that's them just coming through. Go ahead. Uh, this is an area where we decided to take all the storm debris to the landfill would take forever. Uh, this is centrally located. We had this field. There was a lot to do to clear it environmentally, fence it off, put warning signs, everything you got to do to get FEMA reversed. Uh, but this is the beginning of our uh, storm debris pile. Go ahead. Uh, that's a snap pole with a light. Go ahead. Uh, 
more snap poles. Go ahead. Snap pole, go ahead. Uh, this is our manager uh, getting on a truck and picking up debris along uh, the, uh, the lane. Go ahead. This is kind of interesting to me. I mean, if, if you'll see he's being very careful not to touch that power line above. Get in there next to that tree, pick up this uh, uh, debris, uh, and not get electrocuted while doing it. It's a painstaking process, and that's why it takes a long time to uh, remove all of this debris uh, because of all the things you got to look out. Go ahead. You can kind of see he's really looking at one thing and one thing only. Am I going to touch that electric line and you know, kill myself? Uh, so it's a very, uh, you can see all the, the stabilizers that are put out and hold that truck up. It takes quite some time to stabilize a truck, set it up. Get out there, clear the area, pick up the debris. That's why we're always uh, harping on, you know, don't put your debris next to a tree. Uh, don't put your debris in a long linear line, put it in a pile. Everyone works together to uh, uh, put the piles in, in, in four feet away from anything. We can move a little bit more quickly. Go ahead. Uh, that's, that's the pile growing. That's the fencing uh, in place. Go ahead. Uh, those are signs that DEP or uh, FEMA requires. Go ahead. Uh, and then this is uh, Wendell, we saw him earlier, getting ready for the big event coming up the weekend, the art show. And he's jumping on the mower, cutting the grass, getting it ready, um, jumping from one job to another job, which is getting ready for the citizens to come out and take a breather from what we went through. Go ahead. Uh, this is uh, uh, the, the, the event getting ready with the um, Panders going up for, for the big Friday event. Go ahead. And this is a, a seaplane uh, on her cheek. They had at the event a fun um, activity there where you could get a little uh, hand painted seaplane on your cheek at the event. And this is kind of interesting. In the middle of our um, event this past weekend, there was this chalkboard. You could write anything you wanted that related to the art, uh, to, to thanking anyone who helped you in a way during a hurricane. You'll see twice it says, our great city of Tiberias, and then it says city of Tiberias. So people thank moms, dads, others, and they thank the city of Tiberias at the show for everything that we did. And I think that's it, right? All right. So that's a quick overview of uh, the hurricane, what we went through and where we're at. Uh, I'm prepared to answer any questions. We'll have a meeting in, Richard, two weeks, week? Two is the 29th. 29th. Uh, we'll let you know when that is, but that's a debriefing with all of our team to really look at things that we could uh, tweak, improve upon, and things like that. Any questions of me? All right, seeing that very quickly, does anybody from staff just go around want to add anything on hurricane? Uh, we just had two reports of structural damage. One was a storage building, one was a home. So that's good news that we have not gotten a flood of folks coming in saying, my home is damaged, what do I do? Uh, I don't know if they're still locked up in insurance, but at this point, we think we've had minimal structural damage to anyone's home, and that's good news. Okay. Very quick, part. I don't have anything except thank you for everyone's support in filling out the, the many FEMA forms. Uh, we're going to have fun for a little while, but so thank you everyone. Very good camera. Yeah, just real quick, really appreciate all the staff, and I really appreciate the leadership team. Uh, John is very decisive, you guys know that, and it makes all the difference. Everyone is asking, and we've heard it over and over, and I'll talk really fast, how are you guys cleaned up so quickly? I can't believe you cleaned up so quickly. And it is amazing. Uh, it's being decisive. So, very cool to be here during that time. Richard? Uh, just for the council, I'd just like to build on, on something John said and talk about the people that were here. And I had sent you all an email message, and I know some of you got that and you responded to it, but uh, for, this, for the benefit of the audience who haven't seen that message, there were over 60 employees in the city that were here throughout the storm, the worst part of the storm. And all the other employees were at home waiting for conditions to improve so they could come in and go back to work. And it was just a tremendous show of, uh, of teamwork 
and nobody was whining, nobody was complaining. They all left their homes, they left their spouses, they left their kids, their pets behind and came in to work for the city. And I just, I'm just so thrilled to be a part of this city of Berry's family. Thank you. Laura? I think one of the things that really impressed me was all of our meetings in this room. And I would look around and see the determination and the all 